Hey everybody and welcome to another JASP tutorial. In this one, we are going to round out my power analysis module videos with the last one in the series. I have to look at the uh, what the other two module tests are actually looking at. Uh, I'll show you in just a second what I mean by that, uh, but this is gonna be the last one for a little bit. And today we're gonna be talking about two sample proportion or two proportion uh, test. And that's the statistical test that we're gonna be looking at in this one. So how to get the power analysis module? Well, you gotta get yourself some JASP 0.17.2 and hotfix uh, for some errors that you might've been encountering in point one there. So we open up the power modules right here. It's gonna load it up. And we're gonna choose statistical test and we're gonna be doing two sample proportion test. Now it's got the one var one sample variance ratio and two sample variance ratio. And I'm not entirely sure what these two are looking at, um, what these statistical tests are as far as language is concerned. It could just be a matter of nomenclature that I'm not fully grasping. So I'm gonna read up on these two and this will be a much, uh, much these, these two might end up on the channel. They might not end up on the channel. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll come, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So we're gonna choose two sample proportion test, two sample proportion. So we've got two samples, right? We're, we, we've, instead of comparing one sample to an existing proportion and seeing how close or far away we are with that, we are going to have two samples now that we need to see how much power we, or how many people we need to achieve the power that we want. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close plots and data generation. You can find how to do that uh, in a previous video of the overview of this module, which goes over the plots and data generation. We're only gonna focus here pr primarily on the top table here. Okay, so for sample size calculation, the interesting thing is there's no introduction test, uh, text here, uh, as you will find in the one sample proportion test. Okay, so we need two samples. So we are going to be given two ends to figure out, right? Because that's what we're doing with this a priori power analysis, finding out how many people we need to measure based on our proportions, okay? So we've got a baseline proportion. These are the people that we are gonna measure with no intervention, right? And then our comparison proportion, they're gonna get some change, right? So 0.5 and 0.6, let's just go with those two defaults and a 0.9 power and 0.05 alpha, which is our type one error rate, sample size ratio. I generally like having our sample size ratio being one, you know, equal groups. It's a good way to get equivalent groups. So let's just go with that, right? Uh, proportions are pretty robust to violations. So uh, of, of um, homogeneity of variance. So, you know, not too bad, but let's just go ahead and keep it at one, okay? So 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, 0.05, we need 519 people per group, 519 people per group. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. So let's say we don't need 0.9 power. Let's go with the industry standard 0.8, right? So imagine here that we are trying to find an effect size. And in this case, it's a small effect, right? A difference of 0 0.10 in our proportions. A Cohen's H is very small, 0.2, not very small, but small, okay? So we've got a pretty large haystack and we're looking for that needle to see if we can uh, find this effect size of 0.201, pretty large. We need a lot of people. That's what these 519s are for, okay? 519 per group to find that needle. Now, let's say I wanna reduce my power, okay, to 0.8. Well, our effect size is gonna stay the same. Our proportion difference is still 0.10. So how many fewer people do we need to just achieve that? Now, we are increasing, our, we are in doubling, we are doubling our probability from 10% to 20% to miss this effect. We are doubling our chances of missing this effect, not finding the needle in the haystack. So what happens? How many fewer people? 388. So we drop down a good 120 or more, right? Almost, you know, over 130 people we don't need per, per group, per group. That's 130 people per group. So that's if we're okay with missing the effect. Now, if the proportion were bigger, let's say we move this to 0.7, yeah, sure, fine, 0.78. I meant to do 0.75, but I missed the keyboard there. How many fewer people do we need? Only 45, because our Cohen's H here is 0.6. It's pretty, it, it's moderately sized, it's almost big, okay? And our proportion difference is now 0.28. That's a big proportion difference, right? And so we only need 45 people now to be able to do that. And so, this analysis tells us how many people we need with our four pieces of information. We're missing the third one because we're trying to find the third one and we can do that algebraically, right? So we have our effect size calculated under the hood by just putting in our proportions. We have our power, we have our error rate. I don't usually change uh, error rate uh, because it's usually 0.05. Maybe you wanna change it, Let's see what happens when you do change it. And then we're just gonna keep our sample size ratio as one. Now I'm not changing this to less or greater one-sided tests because I think two-side two tests are more conservative and better, okay? So I think it would be a good idea to just keep the alternative hypothesis at two-sided. And I've said that in a number of videos, okay? So that's what happens here. 
Now, you can do two other calculations because, again, we have the four bits of information. If we just are missing one, then we can find that value of the missing one by have knowing the other three. So let's do a post hoc power analysis calculation. Let's say I've already measured groups of people um, and I'm testing their proportions, right? So let's see how much power we got by doing that. So sample size per group, let's say we had 105 per group, okay? Um, and we're leaving that as one, um, so it's 105 per group. You can see here that it replicates 105 for both groups here, right? Um, we're leaving everything else the same. How much power did we actually achieve? 0.991. So we wouldn't miss the effect at all <laughs> with, this param with, with these parameters because our sample size uh, was, was much big, much big. Much big. What am I saying? It's <laughs> big enough. That's what I meant to say. It was big enough. And so it would be very difficult to miss this effect. Very difficult to miss this effect with 105 people. A smaller, uh, a because our, our, our Cohen's H is uh, 0 0.59, 0 0.6. It's a smaller uh, haystack to find that needle, right? And we had a bunch of people working on that haystack. And we ended up, basically ended up finding the needle every single time, right? Now the other thing, and, and if I were to change this back to 0 0.6, right? A much smaller effect. What happens with my power? Well, it will decrease to 0 0.31, right? So our Cohen's H is 0.2. Two, right? Our small effect again, 105 people per group, not very powerful. So this is a big haystack. It's a big haystack, 105 people per group with only a difference of, you know, 0.1 between the two proportions, not a lot of power, right? So that'd be a post hoc, the after you've measured everything, okay? And then the final thing is an effect size calculator. Again, um, I wouldn't recommend using this as determining your effect because you really have to know the other stuff anyways. So to me, it's not that useful. So I would say the effect size is um, just a way to visualize what's, what, what happens here, right? So if we say that P1 should be greater than P2, which is what we've hypothesized here, then we end up with a Cohen's H value of 0.387 and an actual P1 value of 0.689 if we leave our ends at 105 and we leave our power at 0.8. Now, if we change this power to 0.9, what happens to our effect size? Well, it gets bigger, okay? More power, bigger effect size. If we change it to 0.5, then we have a much smaller effect size and a much smaller P to what we had thought. Now, we could switch this up to P1 is supposed to be greater than P2, but that is not appropriate for this situation, okay? Because that's not the case of what we had put in here, but that's fine. Um, we could change that if we wanted to, 0.7, and see what happens. P1 is actually 0.57, uh, which is closer to what we had hypothesized, and our Cohen's H is 0.27. So it could be useful to show what happens to effect sizes for this particular statistical test, but I would just use actual effect size calculators. This is more of a teaching tool than anything else. I would use actual effect size calculators if you did uh, analysis and, and need to know what your effect size is in this particular case. And so that is how you use the two sample proportions test in the power analysis module in JASP 0.17.2. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or other feedback, please leave those in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.